to kick off here at Trojan Field in St. Leon with Chuck Thomas. I'm Mike Perleberg. Lawrenceburg wins the opening coin toss and they elect to receive the opening kickoff from East Central. Sophie Browndike will be handling the kicking duties for East Central. Two players back to return uh, for the Lawrenceburg Tigers are Aiden Gilmore and Tegan Bennett. Both those guys have great speed, so coverage is very important for the Trojans. Be sure and stay tuned after the game tonight. We'll name the star of the game presented by Gary Trable, your local sales expert at Herlinger Chevrolet in West Harrison. Brown Dyke lets it rip from the 40 in the 2020 Indiana High School football season in Dearborn County is underway. Humble. Football return to the 20 and fumbled after being hit by Aiden Gilmore. And East Central appears to recover, and they do at the 21 yard line. Not exactly the opening that Lawrenceburg had planned when they elected to receive the opening kickoff. Gilmore coughs it up. They officially spot the football at the 22. It'll be first and 10 East Central. Chuck, how about a look at our Hagford keys to the game as East Central offense will be making their way out there first. Well, one of them turnovers, which already <laughs> happened, but uh, also possession. East Central, without their star running back, uh, is going to be in, in wanting to slow the game down, run the ball, run the clock, and ball control. Where Lawrenceburg has some quick hitters. They can score from anywhere on the field. So you want to keep their offense off by ball possession. That's your Hag Ford keys to the game. Stop by the dealership on US 50 in Greendale and get your keys to a brand new Ford today. Ryan Bond, the quarterback for East Central, under center for the first snap from scrimmage this season. And we got a timeout prior to the first play from scrimmage from the East Central sideline. Coach Jake Miners wants to chat it over with his team as they maybe didn't have things quite ready to go there. While they take that timeout presented by Beacon Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Let's go through your starting lineup to live brought to you by Dearborn County Casa. Join the vo Voices for Recovery at DearbornCountyCasa.com. East Central starting lineup. On the offensive side, the front five, left tackle Luke Collinsworth, junior All-State, All-EIAC last year as a junior, back for his senior season, the UC commit. Left guard Tyler Dickerson, center Austin Cox, right guard Lucas Adams, right tackle his older brother Logan Adams, a senior. Wide receivers and tight ends. Derek Richter and Nate Busing, wideouts. And tight ends Trey Warner and Casey McQueen, both returning in those roles. Quarterback Ryan Bond, 1,350. 58 passing yards, 18 touchdowns, two interceptions last year as a junior. Running back getting the start tonight is Hunter Sones, a junior who carried all of two times for 67 yards and a touchdown last year. The fullback is Grant Ernst. Ernst is a big man there, too. He'll get the handoff wow. right up the gut and takes it down to about the 16-yard line, which will bring up second down and about six to go. The Lawrenceburg starting defense out there on the field right now. And they go with a balanced formation. Defensive end, Ashton Craig and Wyatt Hartman. Tackle, Braden York and Ethan Paris. Linebackers, Jacob Pierce and Noah Rowlett. The corners are Brendan Bushman and Aiden Gilmore. And the safeties are Jace Bohan and Luke Pierce. That's your starting lineup to live. Presented by Dearborn County Casa. A pass, sky high pass to the end zone. And caught by East Central's number... 10, A.J. Messmore, the senior, didn't play last year for the Trojans. And just like that, on East Central's second play from scrimmage, scores a touchdown on a 16-yard pass from Ryan Bond. It was one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Messmore went up and beat it. Didn't we have a little discussion about Mr. Mesmore before this game started? Heck of an athlete and showed his ups right there to go well, over the corner and pick that ball out of the air and come down in the end zone with it. Sophie Browndike on to kick the extra point for East Central. And with 11-16 to go in the first quarter, Trojans already up 6-0. Last year she was 55 for 58 from uh, extra points. On the way and Ooh, bounces off through. the upright but through. Sophie Browndike, one of one so far. Well, they've gone all of 44 seconds in this season, and the Trojans up against Lawrenceburg 7-0, and they've recovered a turnover. Let's we'll see if Lawrenceburg can't get it together after this on Eagle Country 99.3 and EagleCountryOnline.com. East 
Central quickly on the board here in the first quarter against the Lawrenceburg Tigers. Tigers are turning the opening kickoff, and it was fumbled away by Aiden Gilmore. A couple plays later, East Central puts it in the end zone on a 16-yard pass from Ryan Bond to A.J. Messmore. We were kidding about uh, turnovers, but generally speaking, the first game, first two games, you'll see, uh, obviously, a whole different speed of the game, and you'll find you're going to get some turnovers. Sophie Browndike kicking it away again. And we'll see if a new return man for Lawrenceburg doesn't have a little better luck. Bringing it back this time for Lawrenceburg and securing the football is Ethan Gabbard as he goes down at approximately the 27. The Lawrenceburg starting lineup to live on offense. Brought to you by Dearborn County Casa. Join the voices for recovery at DearbornCountyCasa.com. Offensive line for Lawrenceburg. The tackles are Ethan Paris and Ashton Craig. Guards, Braden Watkins and Lance Bates. Center, Logan Lang. Wide receivers for Lawrenceburg, Daya Patel. All-conference selection last year at wideout. Similarly, Aiden Gilmore on the other side. Tight ends, Braden York and Noah Roulette. Quarterback, Garrett Yoon. Running back, Adam Berg. And fullback, Jacob Pierce. And we have a flag thrown pre-snap. Full start by Lawrenceburg is going to set them back a few yards. On the defensive starting side for East Central, with a 4-3 formation, the tackles, Logan Fowler and Luke Dahl. Defensive end, Jackson Eibold and Parker Becknell. Linebackers, Hunter Sones, Cole Veal, Nathan Griffin. Veal returning from, an, and Griffin returning from all conference seasons last year as juniors. Corners, Eric Perkins and Cooper Hogue. Safeties, Zach Brown and Samuel Ringer. First and 15 for Lawrenceburg from their own 22-yard line. A handoff to Bird, trying to go off left tackle, and he will be taken down after about a one-yard gain. Second down and 14 will be the next play. One of the matchups we want to watch, Mike, is the uh, the sophomore center for the uh, Tigers, Logan Lang. He's a, a nice player, but he's a sophomore. A lot, of, a lot of stress snapping the ball against a good team like the Trojans. Second down for Lawrenceburg. Garrett Yoon in the shotgun. Man in motion behind the line. Yoon running to his right, looking downfield, throwing for the sideline, looking for Patel. And it's over his head, out of bounds. Incomplete pass. Brings up third down for the Tigers. 10.27 to go first quarter. If you're just tuning in, Lawrenceburg down 7-0 against East Central. Very smart play, though, uh, by Garrett as he sprints right. East Central has it very well covered. Instead of doing something silly, he throws the ball out of bounds, third down and long. Screen play, draw play perhaps. Third and long for Lawrenceburg. Trip wides on the right side. Patel, the lone man, out to the left. Yoon in the shotgun. East Central showing blitz. Bird will run up to the line and illegal motion there. As two players are in motion at once against by Lawrenceburg, and that will put them back five yards, making this third and long even longer. So Lawrenceburg trying to snap a long losing streak to East Central. Last Lawrenceburg win versus these Trojans. You got to go all the way back to 1992. Lawrenceburg beat East Central that year, 27 to nothing. Of course, Kelsey Mucker was playing for Lawrenceburg that year. They're probably going to be very conservative here, I would imagine. They don't want to turn the ball over. Third down and 20 officially. Yoon off and running on the draw. And he'll be tackled by an ankle at the 20-yard line. About 16 yards shy of that first down marker. So fourth down for Lawrenceburg. And they will have to punt it away. Well in the East Central Territory. Back to return the punt for the Trojans is Eric Perkins. Central should have very, very good field position again. First time they had it, they got the ball on the 22-yard line after a fumble. They're going to be inside the 50 this time. Kick booted away by Roth for Lawrenceburg. Perkins dodges a tackle, brings it back. He's at the 30, the 20, the 10. Dodges a tackler and in wow. for the score. Eric Perkins, punt return, touchdown. There is a flag down back at the 37. And a hold back there is, I'm not sure it was even necessary. 
But way nonetheless, behind. Perkins okay. going to be As have that touchdown erased, but nice effort nonetheless. Great run back. Lawrenceburg getting bailed out by the penalty flag there. As a coach, it drives you nuts. When, uh, you're, you're exactly right. That block was not, not necessary. I don't know if it was legal or not. I didn't see it, but you didn't need it. Perkins was gone. You don't, run, you don't block behind the runner. That's going to hurt their field position, too. Last year, East Central had a heck of a punt returner. And Devin Donaworth had a couple punt return, kick return touchdowns throughout the season for East Central. A great running back, too, by the way. And pretty good defensive or, uh, back, defensive for that back. matter. That's what I meant. Yeah, he, did, he played oh, a little running back, too, At though. the end of the year, yeah. yeah. And he was very, he just a great athlete. And that he was. And East Central was happy to get the ball in his hands on the return side, special teams, or on the offensive side as a tailback. But he has since graduated, and now Eric Perkins handling the punt return duties. And a good initial showing there, although that big return erased by the penalty. It'll be first and 10 for East Central to Lawrenceburg, 47. Handoff to East Central's Hunter Soans. The junior running back getting the start tonight. Two rushes for 67 yards and a touchdown last year as a sophomore getting in and some throwaway situations for East Central last year. Picks up a yard there. Second down and nine from the 46. Ryan Bond under center. Two wide receivers on the right side. Bond looking over the middle and threw it just a hair behind his attended receiver. Number 10, A.J. Messmore, who caught that touchdown on the first possession for East Central. It'll be third and nine coming up. Threw it high and behind him. It was a slant uh, route. If he'd have hit him in stride, that would have been another touchdown because the middle of the field was wide open. Third down, EC. Three wide receivers, actually four. Three on the right, one on the left. Another in timeout. Score. And East Central yeah, burning their That's second timeout. They burnt one prior to their first play from scrimmage. And now they blow one on this third and nine with 9.02 to go in the first quarter. Timeouts presented by Beacon Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, beaconortho.com. Three time, or two timeouts. We've only played less, a little less than three minutes in the game. That, that's not good. But these are the kinds of things you're going to see early in the first game, maybe even the second game, where things aren't, you know, just not gelling quite right. East Central offensively last year, 38.8 points per game, 331 yards per game as an offense. They're about a 67% run-pass ratio favoring the run. Offensive coordinator Randy Maxwell, former East Central Trojan, great on the field. Now in the coach's box, back as offensive coordinator. Third down and nine for EC out of the timeout. A little different look here. Two wide receivers on each side of the line. And Bond will be in the shotgun. Draw play. Hunter Stones standing to Bond's right. Man in motion behind the line. Bond, a few steps to his right. Passes, connects with Nate Busing, and Busing trying to get to that first down marker, and it appears he has stopped about a yard short, bringing up fourth down and one. However, just inside the 40, East Central might entertain going for it on fourth and short here. That's quite possibly. They're going to bring in, big, this is a big play for the Tigers. Coming in from the sideline for East Central's Casey McQueen. So bringing in an extra lineman. Yep, it appears they are indeed going to try and convert on fourth. Last year, East Central had a 57% success rate going for it on fourth down. Do you run behind your big guy? Bond under center. Hands it off to the fullback. I don't think he got it. Grant I don't think he got it. Actually, it's Cole Veal getting the handoff, and he did not. He gets pushed back. Meeting a man on and pushing him back for the Lawrenceburg Tigers is Jacob Pierce. And that is a turnover on downs going the way of the Lawrenceburg Tigers. That is a big play early in the game for the Tigers. 
8.13 to go, first quarter, trailing 7-0. Lawrenceburg gets the ball back, and I would agree, Chuck, big play there. Maybe that's what Lawrenceburg needs to get a little bit of their swagger working here as they take the ball for the second time here in the early going. Garrett Ewan and crew back out on the field. Struggled with some penalties on their first possession. We'll see if they can clean that up here. Three wide receiver set for Lawrenceburg. Garrett looking downfield, down the left sideline, looking for Patel, and he overthrew him by about four yards. That's a nice job, good job on the coverage for the Trojans, number 27. Despite COVID, Yoon and Patel were able to work together and through the summer. In fact, they had a workout with uh, Tony Pike, former University of Cincinnati and NFL quarterback. Imagine they picked up a tip or two from Tony Pike. I think uh, I'm going to push that to practice tonight. I think uh, I do believe that uh, Coon's been working for or with the second and ten. Yoon passes mm. right side, caught and taken forward by. Lawrenceburg's Adam Bird, and that'll be a first down at the 50. Adam Bird, last year for Lawrenceburg, 267 rushes, 1,732 yards, 23 touchdowns on the ground, and a few catches out of the backfield like that one as well. Mainly a ground threat, however. Yoon passing on the run, looking for Patel, and unable to reel in that pass despite hitting him in the hands. Would have been good for a first down, possibly more. And it'll bring up second down and 10 from midfield for Lawrenceburg. In the scrimmage last Saturday, the secondary got burnt uh, a few times. It looks like they've worked on it. The coverage has been very, very good thus far here in the first quarter. Stay tuned for halftime. We'll name the Wardway Fuels player who's fueling their team. Wardway Fuels, your local propane and home heating oil provider with fast delivery to your business or home. Visit wardway.com. Two wide receivers on the left side for Lawrenceburg. Yoon, fake hand off to Bird, will keep it, run it himself up the middle, finds a seam and dives forward across the 40 down to the 39 to pick up a Tigers first down. Good run. He's shifty back there. Was able to make two good cuts, make one defender miss, and picked up the first down. 2,300 passing yards, 28 touchdowns through the air last year for Garrett Yoon, but just as dangerous on the ground, perhaps 1,000 rushing yards. Averaged 8.2 yards per carry. 12 touchdowns four times last year. He ran for more than 100 yards. First and 10. Yoon in Got the him pocket, open. throwing for Patel over the middle way over. and way overthrew him and then nearly intercepted downfield by Zach Brown, the safety for East Central. Brown got a hand on it but could not reel it in. Good coverage again. That pass, I'm not sure he was really trying to uh, make, the, make the pass or not because he was well covered because he threw that ball, what, 15 yards over his head? Way over his head. So Yoon and Patel trying to find that connection here on a few deep pass attempts so far. We'll get it going eventually. Patel last year for the Tigers. 24 catches, 376 yards, seven touchdowns. All-conference receiver, now a junior. Second down and 10. It's going to be a pass to an offensive lineman for Lawrenceburg. Going deep into the playbook That's and 80, passing it to Braden York. Yeah, he's uh, he was and the York left. takes it forward for about five yards after the catch. Third down and five from the 34. He's, he's really a tight end sometimes, uh, and he was in that case. That was a nice pass. That's a big tight end at uh, 6'4", 278. Yes, uh, you want to you hit him low, I think. <laughs> If he can catch it, he's going to get at least a couple yards just by falling forward. Mm. It's a nice play. Third down for Lawrenceburg. Mark it at the 35, so third and six officially. 
Yoon hands it off to Bird. Bird trying to get to the outside, and he nice cannot. Nice job. Tracking him down in the backfield and tackling him for a loss is Samuel Ringer, junior safety for East Central. That brings up fourth down and seven. Ringer came up really quick, and to make a tackle on Bird in open, open field is really, really good. Uh, he's uh, Bird's very elusive. He talked about his 1,700 yards and 23 year touchdowns last year. He's tough to bring down in the open field. Sam Ringer, a junior, being asked to star on Friday nights now in the secondary for the East Central defense. Comes up with a stop there. Warrensburg going to go for it on fourth down and seven. Yoon dodging a tackle in the backfield. Passing Drop forward. And caught by Dakota Roth. He caught and it. held on just inside the 20-yard line as he came over to the near sideline. Appeared to bobble the ball perhaps for a moment, but the official right there on top of the play says that he indeed held on. And that's a fresh set of downs in the red zone, in fact, for Lawrenceburg. Yoon completing that through Dakota Roth, the senior wideout. Give 520 to go first quarter. Tigers trying to pull even with the Trojans, who now lead 7-0. Give credit to uh, Garrett, too. He came out and, and eluded a would-be tackler, stayed calm, and made a nice pass. Roth winds up wide to the right. Fake handoff from Yoon. He keeps it, runs up the middle, and in for the score. That's a Tigers touchdown. 5-13 to go in the first quarter. Lawrenceburg an extra point away from tying it up at 7-all. 19-yard run by Garrett Yoon. We talked earlier just moments ago about his running ability. Just as dangerous as his passing ability, and he picks up his first touchdown of the 2020 season here from 19 yards out. The reigning EIAC 3A offensive MVP showing why he was worthy of that award last year. Extra point. Rowlett to kick. Actually, it's Joey Hibbard kicking, and it is good. 7-7, 5-13 to go, first quarter. Lawrenceburg ties it up. East Central, we'll see how they respond. Back after this on Eagle Country 99.3 and eaglecountryonline.com. A 19-yard touchdown run for Garrett Yoon and the Lawrenceburg Tigers makes it a 7-7 ball game. Chuck, how about a quick drive recap? Okay, got the ball at 8-13, 39-yard line. They drove eight plays, ended on a 19-yard run by Yoon for a touchdown. Kick was good. A.J. Messmore to return from the 10 for East Central. Right up the middle, got flag, flag is down at about the 25-yard line as Messmore gets up to the 34. This one probably going to come back a few yards. So Lawrenceburg struggled a little bit on their first possession, but they recover well thanks to a couple nice plays by Lawrenceburg, including uh, not only the 19-yard touchdown run by you, but also a nice third down conversion. And a nice for Lawrenceburg as well. That uh, pass to Roth. Yoon to Roth, yep. yeah. which was a key drive saver. It has indeed a hold against the Trojans. So talking about the COVID concerns, we're playing football tonight, but yeah, there is a little bit different look and feel to the game. We probably have a much larger crowd tonight, but they can only limit it to a certain number of fans able to attend here at Trojan Field in St. Leon. And everybody in the stands is supposed to be socially distanced and, that ain't happening. and wearing those masks. <laughs> and well, that six feet's a lot different than I thought. Yeah. We'll go more into that in a moment. First and 10 from the 18-yard line. Bond handing it off to Messmore. Gets tripped up in the backfield and tackled for a loss. Lawrenceburg's number 44, Trevor Jones, comes into the backfield and makes the stop. So some other rules, IHSAA following the NFHS guide, guidance for opening up high school athletics and activities. And among those rules, uh, as far as the team box goes, the team box may be extended on both sides of the field from the 10 yard lines for players only for more social distancing for the teams. Also, the ball should be cleaned and sanitized throughout the contest. Second down and 15 for East Central. Bond passing. Short pass. 
in space is Hunter Sones and is able to pick up about five yards before he is tackled, bringing up third down and 10 from the 17. As far as timeouts, a single charge timeout may be extended to a maximum of two minutes in length. The authorized conference for the charge timeout for should take place between the nine yard marks and not at the sideline for social distancing purposes. As far as the officials, they have to use electronic whistles are only permissible. No handshakes prior to and following the coin toss. Bond passing third and 10. Going up and making the catch, however, shy of the first down marker is East Central's Ryan Brotherton. Catches it and brought down at the 23-yard line. However, they needed to get up to about the 27. That'll bring up fourth down and three. East Central going to have to punt the football away. Jake Fike onto the field for the first time tonight. Will normally be East Central's starting tailback. However, dealing with the upper body injury, limited to kicking duties. That was a sprint right pass. Uh, Bond was out there, had his man. Timeout Lawrenceburg. But, but give credit to the coverage. Uh, he was right there. and denied him that first down. Timeouts presented by Beacon Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Locations in Lawrenceburg, Batesville, and Green Township. A couple other of those uh, COVID considerations in Indiana high school football this year. Suspend pregame protocol of shaking hands during introductions. No shaking of hands between the teams after the game as well. Everyone should have their own beverage container that's not shared. So whoever the water boy is for the team, their job's kind of been eliminated uh, with the onset of the COVID pandemic. And cloth face coverings are permissible for all coaches and team staff and for all game administration officials. Gloves can be worn by coaches and players, of course. And just to general, maintain that social distancing, universal six feet we hear so much about when possible as well. Fourth down and three for East Central. Fike to punt it away. Back to return is Aiden Gilmore. Gilmore had fumbled the opening kickoff of the game. And we'll see how he does in the punt return department. Standing at Lawrenceburg's own 40-yard line, ready to bring this one back. Should have, they should, the Tigers should have good field position after this. 7-7, seven to seven the score here in the first quarter. Fike. Nice high. Big good high coverage. punt. Fumble. I think Gilmore. He, got it he got it back. Bobbles the fumble. It bounces off the chest wow. of the East Central coverage man and right back into the grasp of Gilmore. Wow. Who struggled. Of course, I just mentioned a moment ago, so two chances he's had on return situations and twice having a little bit of trouble. But... Lawrenceburg does retain possession this time. No yards on the return. Just a fortunate bounce for Gilmore and the Tigers that they were able to retain possession on that punt return. Tigers offense back out there after the Lawrenceburg defense forces a three and out by East Central. Yoon, shotgun. Hand off to Bird. Running to the far side and cannot outrun the grasp of East Central's Nate Griffin. Griffin is a tough linebacker. They, East Central got two of the best linebackers I've seen for a long time. No gain on the play for the Tigers, second and 10 from the 42. Luke Collinsworth is even out there playing defense for that play. Now back on the sideline. Primarily an offensive lineman for East Central. Second and 10. Two wide receivers to the right for the Tigers. They split Bird out to the right. Pass Nobody out to here. Bird. Nobody within 10 yards of him. He's going to catch and run, taking out of bounds. Close to a first down and good for a first down, it would appear. Into East Central territory at the 48-yard line. Move the chains for the Lawrenceburg Tigers. That's a first down. Stay tuned for the half. We'll have the Ivy Tech Community College stats report. Ivy Tech with campuses conveniently located in Lawrenceburg and Batesville. Check them out, ivytech.edu. Officials timeout for something. Equipment? Nope. Not quite sure why. Ready to play football again. They'll get that clock started. 
First and 10 for Lawrenceburg from the East Central 47. Trip wides on the left. Yoon passes over the middle, caught by Patel, and he's quickly corralled by a couple East Central tacklers. First to him was Hunter Soans. That'll be good for a first down or close to it. He'll spot the ball and signal, move those chains once again for Lawrenceburg. Tie game, 7-7, but Lawrenceburg at the East Central, 31 now. Three wide to the right, Patel alone on the left side. Stepping back is Gilmore, catching the quick pass from Yoon. Gilmore diving forward and hit and down at the 30. Getting big chunks of play on first down. That was a game of five, six yards. Five yards, second and five coming up from the 31 for Lawrenceburg now. Minute and a half remaining in the first quarter. Second and five is definitely the uh, benefit to the offense. Lawrenceburg offensive coordinator Mike Manford back in that position this season. This offense last year averaged an astonishing 417 yards per game. They ran at 67% of the time. 231 rush yards per game, 186 pass yards per game. Pretty flexible, diverse offense. And timeout by Lawrenceburg with second and five coming up inside a minute to go in the first quarter. We'll take a break and come back with more of the first quarter after this on Eagle Country 99.3 and EagleCountryOnline.com. 58 seconds in the first quarter. Tie game between East Central and Lawrenceburg. And Lawrenceburg facing a second and five from the EC31. East Central showing double blitz here, perhaps. Yoon will hand it off to Bird. He goes up the middle with it, and then Bird able to only peek through the line for a moment. And then stopped after a one-yard gain, bringing up third down and four from the 30. Last meeting between these two teams, East Central. They won it last year at the pit, 30 to 12 in the 19 season opener. The Tigers ran 69 plays to East Central's 36 plays. They even outgained East Central 350 yards to 315. But Lawrenceburg committed three costly turnovers. Trojans running back Jake Fike, he ran for 175 yards and two touchdowns in that game last year. Ryan Bond, he passed for 97 in the score to Trevor Becker. Lawrenceburg, they were led by Garrett Yoon with 83 rushing yards and 201 pass yards. There's a pass attempt by Yoon, batted down right in his face. And that'll bring up fourth down. Coming in and smacking that one down for East Central was Carson Davis. Number 42, senior. Getting in the backfield in a hurry. Put the pressure on. His hands were so far up that, I mean, that almost hit him in the helmet. Yep. Yeah, boy, that was a great defensive play over there. They brought the two outside people in hard. Fourth down for the Tigers. They're going to go for it from the EC30. That quarterback draw has been very, very successful. Let's see if they go with that. Three wide receivers on the right, and then Patel alone to the left for Lawrenceburg. Garrett Yoon in the come. shotgun under pressure. Sidesteps a sack man. Passes Smart down the right sideline, and we'll just let it go on fourth down. Flailing it out of bounds as he was being pursued to the sideline. Threw that one out of bounds. I mean, a little less pressure, maybe you can think to keep that in bounds, but consequential, perhaps non-consequential, as he was being chased. 5.7 seconds remain in the first quarter, and it's going to stay a 7-7 game as Lawrenceburg turns it over on downs. Both teams have turned it over on downs. Little surprise, I thought maybe they would run a, a something a little shorter. That they brought, East Central brought the house there, and he had no time. Smart player. He didn't. Take he was it. lucky to dodge that sack in the backfield. Yeah, absolutely. And he threw that thing out of bounds to uh, make a bad situation worse. <laughs> first and 10 for EC at the 30. Last play of the first quarter here, more than likely. Bond in the shotgun. Messmore motions from the slot, handoff to Sones, diving ahead and gains about three yards up to the 33. And that is the end of the first. High school football on Eagle Country 99.3, WSCH, Lawrenceburg, Aurora, Rising Sun. Chuck Thomas, Mike Perleberg, happy to be back with you for the opening night of high school football on schedule in the state of Indiana. Start of the second quarter, East Central and Lawrenceburg tied up at 7-all. 
Beautiful night for high school football tonight. The sun setting to the west over Trojan Field here. Kind of surprised they haven't turned on the lights yet. Good point. They better get somebody on that. I'm sure Coach and uh, former coach and current athletic director Don Stonefield is on the job. He does a great job, you know, and with this COVID thing, he, he's he's probably got his oh, – Wow. He's, he's probably had a busy week getting ready for this, I'm oh, sure. Well, like, oh, like a lot of ADs across the Hoosier State and elsewhere. I, yeah, I don't envy him. The light's probably the least of our concerns, but only for a little bit longer. <laughs> Trojans facing second down in seven from their own 33. Quarterback Ryan Bond passing to the left side and looking on a short route for number 16, incomplete. Looking for Nate Busing. Third down coming up. Ryan Bond, 17-year-old senior quarterback for East Central, started playing back in third grade for the Sunman Tigers. Son of Jeff Bond, North Dearborn Elementary School principal, was a member of that 1994 East Central State Championship football team. And now his son Ryan, quarterback for the same program. Third down and seven. Bond stepping back, throwing. Looking for Sones, who got a hand on it, but could not reel it in. Incomplete. That brings up fourth down and seven from the 33 for East Central. Not, not much of an offense so far for the East Central Trojans. They uh, got that 19-yard uh, pass for a touchdown, got another first down, and that's it. They have uh, they've been stymied. The, the uh, Tigers have done a nice job on defense. Players lined up and ready to snap. However, a whistle and a timeout called by Lawrenceburg as they have East Central in a fourth down situation on the punt return. They want to make sure they got everybody where they need to be. Roth back to return this time for Lawrenceburg. It was Gilmore on the previous punt return, but for the second time, unable to cleanly handle a kick return. You know, Coach Kaniga did a nice job, said, okay, we're going to let you do it again. But uh, And he probably likes to let him, you know, they've been practicing with him back here. On the other hand, if he drops another one, his confidence is gone for the rest of the year. So you don't want to do that to happen. So Just get him job. some more, more reps in practice in that department. And hopefully Aiden can turn it around. Resilient young man, no doubt that he can. But right now, the job is going to be that of Dakota Roth, number one, 5'10", senior. Timeouts, by the way, presented by Beacon Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Same-day appointments, on-site x-ray and MRI. Learn more at beaconortho.com. Jake Fike. A little Normally the running back for East Central, again, banged up, upper body injury. Will not be featured in the run game tonight, but still able to get some field action as East Central's main punter this season. Last year he averaged 39 yards a kick, so mm -hmm. pretty nice kick. I can see why they'd be happy to have him back. Snap and kicked away by Fike. And Roth is going to signal a fair catch and catches it successfully at the 27. So Warrensburg's offense setting back out there. East Central 26 Eastern Indiana Athletic Conference Championships in program history. They won 10 straight. Hoping to make it 11 straight if they can win it again this year. 19 sectional titles, including four straight from 2015 to 2018. Of course, state championships in 94, as I mentioned a moment ago, and most recently in 2017. Sprint right. Here's Garrett Yoon for Lawrenceburg, their quarterback, rolling Whoa. to the right, passing to the sideline and making a diving attempt at an interception, but unable to grab it was Cooper Hogue, the corner for East Central, second and ten. Next play for Lawrenceburg. A little bit of program history for the Tigers, 11-2 and two last season, won the EIAC 3A division last year. 
Kentucky Central, of course, winning the 4A. Tigers won the sectional championship over Greensburg. Lost the next week in the regional to Heritage Hills, the state runner-up in 3A. They lost that game 22-0. 19 sectional titles, five regional titles, two semi-states, and two state championships back in 75 and 78 under legendary head coach, the late Dick Meter. Second and 10. Yoon, passing. Good pass, good play. Noah Roulette, the tight end, has room to run, and he will be tackled at the 47-yard line, shy of midfield, but that's a Lawrenceburg first down. Big. Noah Roulette, a senior, two catches for 21 yards last year, and you know, he might have eclipsed that on that one catch right there. That was a big play, and he got wide open. He lined up the tight end from the left side, made a crossing to the right. Good action in the backfield and, and brought the linebackers up. Officially spotted at the 46, first and 10 for Lawrenceburg. Now we got a flag. And a flag comes in from the Lawrenceburg sideline. Looks like it's on the Tigers again. That's three if it is. Three hold. Somebody lined up in the neutral zone on offense? Yep. That'll set him back. Have we seen East Central commit a penalty yet? I don't believe so. Not yet. Not yet. I'm sure that you've mentioned it. it will it's probably coming up right yeah, here momentarily. Yeah, it will be forthcoming. <laughs> <laughs> the broadcaster jinx. First and 15 from the 41 for the Lawrenceburg Tigers now. Yoon. Ready to take the snap with Bird right next to him. Option. He does option at the Bird. Coming near side to the 45. Trying to turn the corner and forced out of bounds at about the 48-49. It'll bring up second down and eight. That was a nice play. At least a little sprint option. Had blockers out. Defense did a really nice job over here on this right side. Just stringing that play out. Now Yoon under center. Perkins has done a nice job out there doing it. It's about the second time you've done that. Bird dotting the eye in the backfield. Fake handoff. Yoon rolling Nobody to the right. Nobody's out there. He's going to take off, get the first down, and duck out of bounds unhit. Move the chains again for the Tigers as they get into East Central territory on that QB keeper by the speedy Gavin Yoon. That's a f uh, 40 yards already uh, rushing the ball. There's nobody, somebody has contain over there. I don't know if it's uh, the end, the defensive end or the linebacker, but somebody's got contain in that situation. There simply was nobody there. He had, uh, he could have been playing two hand touch and got that many yards. <laughs> First and 10 for Lawrenceburg. Patel, the lone wide receiver in this set, lined up on the near side. And off the bird, up the middle, and they'll get a yard, and that's it. Second down and nine. Talking to head coach Ryan Kaniga on Eagle Country 99.3 this morning about Garrett Yoon. Said he's a worker, trains on, has been training on the weekends, doing it the right way. No doubt he can get better. There are some things we're trying to work on with him to improve his game, however. Now in his third year as a starter, as a junior, been starting every game at quarterback for Lawrenceburg since he was 14 years old at the varsity level. Man in motion in Rowlett. Yoon in the pocket looking downfield. Nobody's open, so he takes off running up the middle and tackled prior to getting to the 35-yard line. That'll bring up third down in two. Great decision there. Uh, Saul was uh, had a deep man. He was covered. It took his time. Do you see how, how much time he took? To, he didn't rush anything. And then when he saw the crease in the line, he took off from the left to the right, picked up about eight yards. Cooper Ho getting in there, helping make that tackle for East Central. Third down and two for Lawrenceburg at the East Central 36. Nice matchup here with Perkins and uh, Again, Patel. one wide receiver set here with Patel. Handoff. Up the middle to the fullback for Lawrenceburg. Rowlett unable to get any yardage out of that. That brings up fourth down and two. So decision time here for Coach Ryan Kaniga. 
Ball positioned at the 36-yard line. And you could punt it, maybe get a few net yards or go for it and keep this drive alive. And he's going to tell his team to stay out there and go for it. Hewn will, they're going to give him a run pass option on this. Watch the sprint left. We'll find out together here, Chuck, if you're right. And flag throw prior to the snap. Full start against Lawrenceburg. Well, maybe that'll change the math here and the decision by Lawrenceburg to try and go for it, but maybe not. We'll see. I believe it's like they're still going to keep the offense out there and try to convert on now fourth and seven. This may work out, but I think it might be a mistake. I mean, if they punt it right now, they uh, East Central has not moved the ball at all. If you pin them inside the 20 or even better, uh, then you're going to have really good field position afterwards. 7-7 seven, seven game, 8.45 to go in the second quarter. Lawrenceburg going for it on fourth and seven from the East Central 41. Yoon, shotgun. Trip wides on the left. Yoon, flags thrown as the ball is snapped. Below the play dead. And again, it's against Lawrenceburg. Another false start. And if that last penalty weren't enough to change their mind, that one is. Coach Ryan Kaniga throws the headset to the artificial turf here at Trojan Field. And he sends out his punt unit. Lawrenceburg has hurt themselves badly tonight uh, with the fumble uh, and almost another fumble and uh, penalties. Only the five-yard variety, but they've come at some pretty bad spots, particularly these last two. All that said, tie ball game at 7-7. Roth punts it away, bounces at the 17, rides the sideline for a moment, and will be officially marked out of bounds at the... Yeah, about 17-yard yeah, line. 8.37 to go, second quarter, 7-7. Seven to seven. East Central's offense will get back out on the field in just a moment. Key returning players this year for East Central on the offensive side. Of course, we've been talking about Ryan Bond and, and Luke Collinsworth, uh, the big UC commit in his senior season. But other key players they got coming back on the offensive side include Logan Adams and Jake Fike, although injured tonight, not able to be in his star running back role as he had been last year as a junior. And A.J. Messmore, who's got a touchdown pass already tonight from Ryan Bond. First and 10 for EC. Run up the middle by Soans. And that'll be about a five-yard gain, second and five coming up. It's a big gain on first down, right up the middle. Uh-huh. New Central offensively committed 11 turnovers last year, and they were plus 14 in the turnover department. Bond passing right side, looking for Messmore, and it sails past him out of bounds. Messmore was cutting in. The ball went to the sideline, and he could not make the adjustment to catch it. Yes, out of I sync with Bond there. It'll bring up third down and five. Hard to say if the re receiver ran a bad route or the quarterback made an uh, errant throw. Uh, you never know. I, we don't blame anybody anyway, do we? No. No. High school kids. Third down for EC. From the 22. Bond under center. Two wide receivers, one on each side. Split way out wide. Looking for Messmore again. And he cannot bring this one in as there was a defender all over him. There on the coverage for the Lawrenceburg Tigers was Jace Bohan getting there and perfectly timing the coverage and perhaps able to knock that ball away. Great job by the, the corner over there. Even if he'd have caught that, he wasn't in first down territory. Bohan last year at safety for Lawrenceburg, an all-conference selection, and now a junior this year back out there for Lawrenceburg in the secondary leading that department. Fourth down and five. East Central is going to have to punt the football away. Fike boots it. Bad. It's high but it's off short. His off the side of his foot and it'll bounce out of bounds at about the 41. And Lawrenceburg will start with a very short field just 41 yards away from the end zone. 
7.42 to go, second quarter. Tigers, prime opportunity here to perhaps take the lead on the road against East Central, a team that they have not beaten since 1992, home or away. Still a long way to go in this game, admittedly. But despite the, mis the mounting amount of mistakes by Lawrenceburg, we're still in a tie game, and they got the ball. Got trips to one side, wide out over here to Patel. I think one-on-one -on -one Patel. Patel's kind of out there alone. Single coverage, it looks like. Yoon option. instead going to option it to Bird, who's going to the right. Bird then cuts it back inside, makes a tackler miss, and is able to pick up a first down to close to the 30-yard line. Move the chains for the Tigers. That's the biggest gain for Bird tonight, 11 yards. Gives him about 20 on the night. Adam Bird looking strong, picking up where he left off last year with 1,700 rushing yards, 6.5 yards per carry. All-conference running back last year for the Tigers. First and 10 for Lawrenceburg from the 31. They split Bird out from the backfield on the sweep, complete to Bird. And he's tackled at the 25. Another chunky yardage on first down for Lawrenceburg. Another five yards on that completion from Yoon to Bird. As we enter seven minutes to go before halftime. What happens is Bird lines up uh, on the left halfback, takes off running off to the left side of the flat area, uh, and it's hard to get to him. And he, he catches the ball in space. East Central's done a nice job against him because he's tough to bring down. I, I think I mentioned that before. Yoon, shotgun, takes a snap, looking to throw. Pattern. Gilmore to the left. Tries to make a diving attempt to catch in that football. However, cannot reel it in. Falls incomplete. Now third down and five for Lawrenceburg with six and a half to go in the quarter. Good morning. Just simple uh, flag route, route down, out. Yoon had plenty of time. Saw him. I th thought he caught it at first, didn't you? Went right through his arms. He had to lay out pretty much horizontally yeah. to try and have a chance of catching that ball, and Gilmore could not grab it. Garrett put it, though, where nobody could get it except him, though, the defender. Right. No way could have only, gotten it. Only his guy had a chance at go. it. Another and penalty. flag thrown, likely against Lawrenceburg, as the ball is snapped here once again. And again, signaled a full start against the Lawrenceburg Tigers. Sure seems like it's The officials, however, talking about it. Yep, full start against Lawrenceburg. They're probably talking going, you know, we probably shouldn't call these bullies on one team. <laughs> probably uh, talk to these players, let them know what they're doing wrong. Yeah, cut it out. <laughs> You're making us look bad. <laughs> the penalties have certainly been lopsided in this first half. Six to nothing. Yeah. And almost all of them have been false starts. I'm right, I don't know what they're possibly talking about. It either was or it wasn't. Be sure and stay tuned after the game. We'll name the star of the game presented by Gary Trable. Be the star of your game in a new car, truck, or SUV with the warranty forever from Gary Trable they, at Hurlinger Chevrolet in West Harrison. They picked up the flag. Uh-huh. Wonder what was said in that conversation. I don't know. But Lawrenceburg, no doubt happy with the result. As it is now third and th will remain third and five, no penalty. That's a lot better than uh, third and ten. All right, twin wideouts to the right in this formation. Union Bird in the backfield, Noah Roulette. Got an unbalanced right. Yep, man. Yep. off the bird. Nothing going there. Only gets a yard. Needed five. That brings up fourth down and four and a half. <laughs> yeah. Didn't even get a full yard on that run as he's had to dive for what he could get. What little precious real estate he could get against the C-Central defense. Bird has not done well up in, in the middle. They're really concentrating. What they what Lawrenceburg has done well is fake that dive and uh, Hewn take come off of that. That's been very effective for him. 
Fourth down, Lawrenceburg going to keep the offense out there and go for it. East Central's defense last year only allowed opponents to convert 28% of the time. Sprint right pass. Or they're going to throw it. There it is. Bird in motion to the right. Makes the catch out there. Dodges oh, the tackle. Did he get it? Gets the first down at the 20-yard line and then hit hard, but he holds on to it. And that'll be a fresh set for the Tigers as the completion from Yoon to Bird is taken forward just a yard beyond the stick. Bird's hurting him uh, by the pass. Yeah, East Central's really not found a way to contain that quick out pass to Bird well, as he splits out from the backfield out to the sideline. He sprint right. They had trips right, and everybody was over there. He sprinted right, and uh, he had a he said run or pass, and he saw him open. Nice pass. Bird he elusive kept. as well to make a there tackler is. miss there. Yoon keeps this one, takes off up the middle, and will gain five yards, maybe more, on that first down carry by the QB. Indeed, second down and five as Yoon makes it to the 15. That Lawrenceburg in the East Central red zone now. He tripped. If he hadn't tripped, that might have been six also. Inside five minutes to go in the second quarter. Seven to seven. Tigers hoping to take the lead here. Well, East Central's defense bend but not break. We'll find out here in a moment. Patel wide to the left. Also Roth out there on the left side. Keep Yoon keeps. Ball looked like it came out. And East Central appears to get on top of it at the four. Recovered by Cooper Hogue. My, well, as Yoon went down, my. somebody popped that football out. And Hogue was right there on top of it before anybody knew it. Recovered at the 15. It will remain a tie game for the time being. 7-7, seven, seven, four and a half to go before halftime. East Central forces the second Lawrenceburg turnover in this game. Gavin Yoon with the, pardon me, Garrett Yoon with the fumble. Fumbled it thrice last year. And that's his first committed this season here in this first game. Plenty of time for the Trojans to march downfield and get some points on the board before we hit the break. Hand off to Sones, coming near side, then tries to cut it back inside, breaks a tackle, and then carries a couple more Tiger tacklers up to the 33. Strong run by East Central's Hunter Sones. Great job there. And uh, give some credit to Ernst there, the big fullback who came through and delivered a really, really good block, kicked the man out, and allowed Jones to make that little, little slide move to the outside to get the big yardage. First and 10, EC from the 33. Bond, pardon me, we got the Wildcat running here as the ball snapped to Messmore. He hands it off to Sones, and Sones takes off to the left side and will pick up another first down up to the 45-yard line. Messmore back there. He played quarterback uh, as he came up, and now they're using him as, now he's not, he's a little different than Bond. Bond uh, is a Pocket straight passer guy. guy. Yeah, and uh, Messmore is the running type of quarterback. He's still out there as QB. Hand off to Sones again. Still on Oh, his yeah. Feet. Nice run Sones by Sones. Nice job. Shed two or three shoestring tacklers and is able to turn something into nothing and pick up four yards. Second down and six from the 49, just shy of midfield. Showed me a lot of second effort there. He was hit two or three times at the line of scrimmage. Managed to keep his balance and pick up four extra yards. Nice job. A little three minutes and counting in the second quarter in a tie game between Lawrenceburg and East Central. Trojans trying to drive down the field and break this tie. Messmore still out there as the quarterback in the shotgun. He keeps it this time. Runs to the left. Through the initial line. Past the secondary. Nobody's going to catch A.J. Messmore. ECTD. And there's a flag down oh, at the that's 47 at the line of scrimmage. Holding oh. by East Central. Bring it back. 51-yard touchdown run by Messmore erased by the laundry on the field. 
He is a speedster, and he showed it a little bit there. Uh, think about think about if you're uh, Lawrenceburg. You've been preparing all week to see the style of Bond, and all of a sudden now you got a guy back there that's more run than pass. That, you notice how Soames also also get, start getting openings running. Yep. Now you're you're defending two running backs really back there. Now don't make me a mistake. Uh, AJ can throw the ball. All right. So we'll see if he uncorks one here in a minute. First penalty of the game for East Central comes at the worst possible time and erases a touchdown run by A.J. Messmore with 2.39 to go in the second quarter. Sets him back to the 37. Second down and 20 for E.C. Messmore still out there. Calling the shots for the East Central offense. He'll hold on to this snap, brings it to the right side, however, swallowed up. Nothing there. At the line of scrimmage. Third down and 19. Stay tuned for the Whitewater Motor Company and Milan Halftime Show. Whitewater Motor Company, the most trusted name in the car business, will give you your Ivy Tech Community College stats report as part of the halftime report. Inside two to go in the second quarter. Unbalanced to the left. Now we're going to get whistle a blown, flag. flag thrown from downfield. I don't know. It's got to be on East Central, I would imagine. Delay a game. Ah, they got to get it off. That's what happens when you get a your quarterback comes in, and you know he hasn't had as many snaps as Bond. And now you got to get him. Five-yard penalty, third down and 24 from the 31 for East Central now, going the wrong way. A big swing, big consequential penalty a minute ago. Oh, it should have been an A.J. Messmore touchdown run. Both teams have killed themselves uh, with fumbles and penalties so far. But just recently, the Trojans here on a holding call. 137 to go before half. Unbalanced left. Messmore still in there at QB. Now we got another and now flags thrown on the snap. East Central false start. Another one. Boy, they're making up for the one not having any. <laughs> they started this possession with zero penalties committed in this game. And all of a sudden they've committed three. Oh, it's against Lawrenceburg offsides. Well, I stand corrected. Shouldn't jump to conclusions like that, should we, Chuck? No, but I didn't see anybody move, did you? <laughs> Somebody flinched. Yep. So third down and 19 now from the 36. See if we can get a football playoff here eventually without a penalty. And we got guys jumping across the line once again. Another offsides by Lawrenceburg trying to get across early that time for the Tigers was Trevor Jones. Want to bet, end. want to make a, a, a guess of what the Coach Kaniga talks to him about at halftime? Uh, offsides and false uh, starts? Penalties, yeah, yes. definitely, definitely. <laughs> Third down and 14. And East Central marching forward. <laughs> pass without a couple times by benefit of Lawrenceburg penalties. Now at the 41. Bond is back in there at QB, throwing deep down the right sideline, looking for Messmore, and ball lands out of bounds, incomplete. Messmore guarded downfield by Aiden Gilmore. It'll bring up fourth down and 14, and with the ball at the 41, East Central is going to punt with a minute and a half to go in the first half.
Jake Fike to punt it away. Back to return is Dakota Roth for Lawrenceburg. Standing at the 25. Fike's last punt was a short one. This one much better. Roth will fair catch it at the 22. You know, the Tigers with a minute 25 to try and get downfield and put a few more points on the board before the break. In a slow final five minutes or so here in this half. As the sun has set, and indeed, Chuck, the lights are now on. That was a concern a little bit ago, but the athletic staff here at East Central flipped the switch in time. Minute 25, second quarter, 7-7, East Central and Lawrenceburg. Tigers football now. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left. And a flag thrown from the sideline. Full start against Lawrenceburg. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's true at all, but you wonder with COVID and everything, if that uh, you know um, shortened uh, practice times and everything else and didn't allow players to maybe get some of the off-season preparation in that they normally would have been able to, camps and whatnot. I, I'm sure that that has something to do with it, although. This could be a product that, of that. that. That's true, and you can you can say three, four, but now they've had eight penalties. Six of them, I think, have been false starts, and that's, that's not okay. Hmm. First and 15 from the 18 now for Lawrenceburg. And yeah, carry up the middle by Yoon on the QB keeper. He'll get to the 20 for a gain of about three. Second down and 12, or perhaps 13 coming up next with a minute seven and counting before halftime. They, you, you don't want to do anything dumb if you're the Tigers. You, you, you've probably won this first half outside that last um, kind of rush by the when they when East Central went to the Wildcat with uh, Mesmore. Um, you, you don't want to throw an interception or get a fumble down here where they might get down. I mean, they're in field goal range right now. East Central, should they get? What is that? Okay. Yep, that makes sense. I think everybody's seen enough. And, yeah, Lawrenceburg's just going to get the signal from the sideline to kneel as they face third and 15. Just let the clock run down. East Central with only one timeout left will not use it. And they appear content to let the clock run out here in the final minute of the first half. So we will go to the locker room tied up at 7-7. Seven to seven. So it'll be a fresh ball game when we return for the third quarter. Lawrenceburg has not beaten East Central since 1992, but these two teams going into the locker room at halftime tied up at 7 all. We're going to take a break, come back with the Whitewater Motor Company in my Ready to kick off the third quarter, East Central and Lawrenceburg. What do you call this? Uh, Dearborn County rivalry, but it, it needs an official name, Chuck. Like the, we got the Ward of I-74 and East Central and Harrison hookup. Unfortunately, that's not happening this year. So, so like the... Soiree of State Road 1 or what? Soiree. I like that. <laughs> now, that's a nice word. Soiree. That could be. That could catch on. I don't know what that means. Just, I don't know. It's a neat word. I never ring to it, though. Here's Lawrenceburg kicking off to start the third quarter. It'll be fielded at the 25-yard line. Returning it up the middle Jeez, of the field. Okay. For East Central is Hunter Soans, and he gets all the way out to the 47-yard line before wow. he is finally stopped. So East Central will have some pretty advantageous starting field position on this first possession of the third quarter. Both these teams challenged to find a rhythm in the first half, hoping to have gotten that straightened out during halftime, but we Mesmore's coming we'll see out if the proof is in the pudding. Mesmore coming out as quarterback. We saw a mix of him and Ryan Bond late in the second quarter, calling as the signal caller for East Central. Hand off to Hunter Soans. To the 
right side and then back to the middle. Falls across midfield into Lawrenceburg territory to the 49-yard line. Second down and seven will be the next play for EC. Hunter Soans. The junior running back for East Central, 16 years old. Played in elementary school for the Sunman Trojans and the Sunman Dearborn Middle School Trojans. Says he plays football because he's always loved and watched it. Mess Moore takes it this time. Runs to the left. Not much there. And tackled at the line for little to no gain. Making that stop for the Lawrenceburg Tigers. Was number 54. That's Ashton Craig. Craig's a nice player. They got a nice front. Third down and six coming up Craig for and Lawrenceburg. Craig and York and uh, Hartman and nice, nice front. Good players. Third and seven snap. Here's Ryan Bond back at quarterback for EC running to his right. Nice to throw, the nice sideline and the cut made successfully on the sideline, tapping the toe and reeling in that pass for the East Central Trojans with Nate Busing for a East Central touch uh, first down at the 32. Move the chains for the Trojans. Just their third first down on the evening. Nice pass by, he drug that out and made, and that great feat by Bruni out there to keep his feet in bounds here on this right side. And uh, Mesmore so far looks pretty comfortable with that QB position. And he does. Now was Bond on that completion. Now Mesmore back oh. out there. Mesmore takes the handoff, keeps it himself, runs to the left side, sheds a tackler, turns the corner, up to the 20. To the 10, and inside the five yard is finally taken down. A.J. Messmore, a big, impressive run there to set East Central up at the goal line. First down, Trojans knocking on the door. That was a great fake. Nice blocking out there on the left side. Just a little fake to the running back going one way. Him taken off for the other. That was similar to the play they ran, which Messmore had called back, okay. in which he would have ran for a 51-yard touchdown. This time it stands as he's tackled at the two. First and goal from the two now. Handoff. Inside. Zones dives for the goal line and gets it. That's an EC TD. They'll jump ahead 13-7 to with 9.44 to go in the third quarter. And East Central scripted and executed that opening drive of the third perfectly. Sophie Browndike on to kick the extra point for East Central. Browndike on her first extra point attempt back in the first quarter, banged it off the upright but through across the crossbar. Snap, hold, kick, and this one appears to be good, and it is. Sophie with the leg to get it through, 14-7, to 7, East Central. 9.44 to go, third quarter. We'll take a break back with the Lawrenceburg possession to see how the Tigers respond after this on Eagle Country 99.3 and eaglecountryonline.com. This is Eagle Country 99.3 WSCH, Aurora Lawrenceburg Rising Sun. High school football coverage tonight live from St. Leon. Lawrenceburg now trailing East Central 14-7 after a two-yard run for East Central's Hunter Sones. That's his first touchdown of this season. Did score one last year. One of his two carries was a touchdown last year when uh, Hunter was just a sophomore. Chuck, how about a quick drive recap yep. of that East Central score? Pretty quick. 47, you got it uh, on the 47. Uh, ran five plays. 944, they score. It's a four-yard run by Jones. And uh, also, uh, before that, of course, uh, the runs by Mesmore. What was it, about a 30-yard, 35-yard run? That set it up. Now we're ready to go. 
Sophie Brondike ready to kick the football away. It'll be fielded at the 15. Returned by Lawrenceburg's Adam Bird. Runs to the left and out to the right to the far side of the field as he tries to cut it across and will only make it to the 26 before being tackled by the East Central coverage. Very, very good coverage. Uh, everybody stayed. You notice how they came down. They stayed in their lanes just like their coach. Uh, Bird's really fast, and he, he just couldn't turn the corner out there. First and 10 for Lawrenceburg from the 26-yard line. A Central scored on their opening possession of the third quarter. Lawrenceburg will try to replicate that. Garrett Yoon, the quarterback, in the shotgun. Three wide receivers on the near side. Options it. A little shuffle pass to Adam Bird. Bird will go straight ahead with it and pick up only two yards. Second down and eight will be the next play. Very, very close to being uh, a loss in the backfield. Bird made a great cut to pick up the three yards. Looking at some of the key losses for Lawrenceburg from a year ago. Players they lost to graduation. Wide receiver Gavin Yoon, the older brother of quarterback Garrett Yoon, now playing basketball at Taylor University. Had 23 catches for a team team leading 638 receiving yards and eight touchdowns. They're also going to miss leading reception man Seth Lampert in the passing game this year. Oh. Here's Yoon under pressure trying to step up in the pocket and then taken down for a loss. And they go down for a sack. Cole Veal coming in and wrapping them up. Great job. Veal, I think, was the one, but they set somebody that didn't rush. They stand in the line of scrimmage, and they were spying, you know, uh, what they call spying, making sure that uh, Hewn didn't take off, and uh, he was there to make the tackle. Third down and eight for Lawrenceburg coming up from the 28. Other key losses for Lawrenceburg, linebacker Andrew Rennekamp and Marshall Kennard and offensive lineman Jason Morton, who's gone on to play it. Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. Yoon passing, oh, intercepted. Going up and picking it off for the East Central Trojans is Sam Ringer. Ringer returning in for the touchdown. Where he picked that ball off, there was nobody in his path to the end zone. Yoon tried to get there and stop him along with a couple offensive linemen, but Sam Ringer with the pick six. East Central now ahead 20 to seven with eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Just a mistake by Yoon and now we got Aiden Gilmore banged up, slow to get up on the turf at the 20 yard line. He'll eventually get off the field under his own power, although a little bit hobbled. He's limping pretty good, isn't he? He is. That's Gilmore shooken up on the play. But Sam Ringer had to go straight up to try and pick off that pass, and he did just that. It wasn't near the receiver. It was just kind of stepped in the middle of that passing lane and was just able to get high enough to pick up, pick off that pass over the top of his head and then take it to the near side pile on at the goal line. Had to dive for it to beat an offensive lineman to the goal line, but he did so successfully for the pick six. Brown Great. Dyke on to kick the extra point. On the way, and it is good. 21-7, East Central. Now up two scores just like that inside the first four minutes uh, of yeah. the third quarter. This is, a, this is a gut check time for the Tigers now. They have to move the ball. They got they, they have the ability to do it. They have the talent to it uh, right now. They're probably in shock. Four minutes and two touchdowns. I, don't, I think that... Uh, Garrett Kuhn, just, uh, Hewn, I don't think he saw the guy. I mean, I mean, he, he just looking at his receiver, and Ringer had dropped into his own coverage uh, and just picked it. Nice job by Ringer. Ringer was uh, almost like exactly in the middle of that passing lane. Yep. Wasn't as I noted, not really near the receiver. Just nope. happened to be in the passing lane at, and intersected it perfectly. Been impressed with the East Central's uh, kickoff coverage. East Central, 25 takeaways as a defense last year. They've already had two in this game. Ringer and Perkins both have done nice jobs to covering uh, in the secondary. They've been right with their man. 
One of the plays that South, uh, that Lawrenceburg has went, hasn't went back to is that tight end drag, which was wide open uh, midway through the first quarter. We'll see how Garrett Yoon and the Tigers offense bounce back from that. Shell shocked almost here in the opening minutes of the third quarter. It was a tie game when we started the third quarter and here four minutes later, Trojans ahead by two scores. This is not, you know, it's uh, not good for the uh, Tigers. For one thing, they have to fight back, which is going to be a lot more energy. And two platoon by the East Central. Adam Bird going to return from inside the 10. And we'll get it to the 25 before being stopped by Hunter Stones. Stones uh, doing a nice job. Now he plays linebacker too, and he's on the kickoff uh, coverage team. Does it all. Yes, he does. He's in every phase of the game just about. First and 10 for Lawrenceburg from the 25. You got plenty of time. You, you don't want to do look to be doing, you know, you just move the ball, play some good defense, get back into the game if you're the Tigers. Three wide receivers on the right, and then Daya Patel alone on the left. Yoon rolling to the right. Oh, Passes yeah. Lead to Dakota Rock, but he takes a hit immediately. And however, will be a five yard gain on first down to the 30 yard line, second down and five coming up. Roth taking the hit, but managing to hold on. Five tough yards on that one. Uh, he took a shot, but uh, Roth, nice job. Veteran kid made a nice catch, hung onto the ball. A lot of people would have dropped that one. 7.20 to go, third quarter. Yoon off to the races and tackled from behind by Cole Veal, but not until Yoon is able to pick up first down and then some, moving the football ahead to the 44. Yoon making a case to be the star of the game presented by Gary Trable, your local sales expert at Herlinger Chevrolet in West Harrison. We'll name one of the stars of the game for each team following the conclusion of the contest here on Eagle Country 99-3. Fake handoff by Yoon on first down. There's that. This is to Patel who finds a soft spot in the defense and off and running into East Central Territory tackled at the 36. Daya Patel on in a perfect pass from Garrett Yoon there. Nice job by uh, both the quarterback and Patel, the receiver. Uh, just uh, a little slant in, a, a hook and uh, Took the linebacker out of there. He snuck in, got the ball on, on in, in stride, picked up 14 yards. First and 10 from the 36. Yoon hands it off to Bird. Bird dodges one tackle in the backfield and is able to take a tackler or two forward to about the 33. Gains about four yards. Second down and six will be the next play for the Lawrenceburg Tigers with 6-11 to play in the third quarter, trailing 21-7. 28 yards for Bird, well under his average. Kind of think he might bust one. It'd be hard to keep him down the whole game, but he's central doing a nice job right now. Second down. Yoon looking downfield. Moving up in the oh. pocket, passing to Patel. Similar play to what we saw a moment ago. However, this time, Patel has the ball hit him right in the chest, and he cannot hold on. Yeah, that's... Ball's incomplete. That's when you go back, your quarterback says, that's, that's okay, that's okay. Just don't do it again. <laughs> Constructive criticism. Yeah, I mean, that was... Uh, you, you described it exactly with what happened. It hit him right square in the... You're supposed to use your hands. The coaches will tell you, you don't let it hit your uh, pads because that's what happens. They bounce out. Yep. Coach Kaniga telling us before the game that it is always a measuring stick. 
So they're going to come out here, take a swing, and see where they're at. There's a swing on third down, and nothing doing there for the Lawrenceburg run game as Yoon gets swallowed up at the line of scrimmage, even loses a couple yards. Now fourth down and eight. That is a, a situation. That, was, that play was very, very successful in the first half. Fake to the running back going to one side, this case right side. He comes right off his tail into a gap, but uh, the defensive linemen stayed, there, stayed where they were supposed to be, and there's no running room. It's fourth and eight from the 34-yard line of East Central, so Lawrenceburg's going to keep the offense out there and go for it. Too far to kick it, too short to Here field to run it. Here they come. Yoon, under pressure, flushed out to the right side, tackled from behind, making the stop for East Central, wrapping up. Garrett Yoon is 54. That is out of my roster. Jake Blake makes the stop. Nice job. The credit to the right man there. Jake Blake, number 54, comes in and on that run by Yoon. I'm not sure if Blake doesn't get to him. If Yoon does not manage to turn the corner and certainly up the sideline to get that first down. Certainly looked like he had some room out there, didn't he? It did. I may have saved that, and it'll be a turnover on downs by Lawrenceburg. Ball now in East Central possession Who's at the 34-yard line. Is it Mesmore? Out there right now. We got Messmore and Sones in the backfield, and it looks to be Messmore is a signal caller. Hands it off to Sones. Coming Nothing near side. There. Look at that. Tigers great effort. there. The blockers sticking with it till the end and allowing Sones to kind of spin it back toward the inside and gain at least a couple yards on that run. Give them three. Second down and seven. Up to the 36. Great effort. He was hit by uh, left side of the Lawrenceburg line. The linebackers and down linemen uh, still m just, just through sheer effort and balance that made it took a loss and made it a three two yard gain second down for EC still mess more out there calling the shots on three, two, one. Right. hand off the stones again again he comes near side Back inside, then back to the outside, and is able to get a first down up to the 44-yard line before he is eventually stopped by Lawrenceburg's number 23, Jace Bohan, the free safety, coming up to make the tackle, but not until after Hunter Sones gets the first down yardage. One of the things we talked about, Mike, uh, at halftime is that war of attrition that we talked about. You remember two, two platoon, East Central, and Lawrenceburg has seven guys guys at least going both ways and the last three years that's really hurt the, the Tigers I think in that third and fourth quarter. 340 to go third quarter East Central 21 Lawrenceburg 7. Trojans with the first and 10 from their own 44 yard line They're shuffling things up at the out. line of scrimmage at the last moment yeah. and with the play clock running down East Central will have their coaches call the timeout from the sideline while they try and get readjusted. Timeouts presented by Beacon Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Our friends there, check them out at beaconortho.com. Thanks to them for proudly sponsoring high school sports on your hometown radio station once again this season. Dr. David Argo and a host of others there, great supporters of high school athletics in southeastern Indiana. Talking with... East Central High School coach Jake Miners in his second year as head coach at East Central about this whole COVID situation. Of course, we talked about a little early in the broadcast about all the kind of special links they're going to. I mean, you're talking about sanitizing the football every time it comes on or off the field and sending a new football in. Uh, it says of COVID, our goal is to simply have fun with everything our players have endured the last few months. They deserve to have fun. It's been really nice these last few weeks to get back to some sense of normalcy. Uh, Coach Miners crediting the IHSAA, Dr. Jackson, and the EC administrative team that have done an outstanding job giving players an opportunity to play this season. So hoping they're able to get this season in in its entirety and achieve all the goals they set for themselves as a team this year. 
I tell you what, I, I, I've got a whole lot of respect for ADs in general, but yeah. but more what, so this year. What they have went through, I can't even imagine. Coach Stone, uh, I always call Coach Stone. Coach. It's not just football on Friday nights. No, I mean, volleyball this time of year, and, and that's indoor, and, and even you, harder to social distance. And you have to uh, jump through uh, rings, and I I don't know. Boy, I tell you, I'm I, me and you laughed a little bit, and I can't help it, but I don't know how sanitizing the football. Uh, <laughs> it's the same people, you know. I, I don't know. Sure. But I don't. I'm not that bright, and, and most people will, will attest to that. We'll ask Dr. Fauci sometime. Yeah. Maybe he has thoughts on the, the football sanitation. <laughs> it, it won't hurt. No. Or stopping no. the spread. We no. do know that. No. <laughs> Twenty-one to seven. He's central, first and 10. Messmore bringing it near side and then stepping out of bounds at the 46 or 47, which will bring up second down and seven. And now a Lawrenceburg Tigers player is injured on the East Central sideline. That 44. banged up Lawrenceburg player. 324 to go in the third quarter. East Central 21, Lawrenceburg 7. It's paused for an injury timeout. Shaken up on that last play was Lawrenceburg's. Trevor Jones, a senior defensive end, uh, leg injury apparently, and, and to bring out the golf cart, and he's on that and taking a ride to the uh, trainer's room now to get a little closer look at that injury, or at least get him over to the sideline and allow play to proceed, and he gets a hand from both sides of the stands here at Trojan Field in St. Leon. Best uh, wishes to Trevor Jones. Hopefully he'll be back on the field at some point uh, this season, if not tonight. We'll see. Second down and eight from the 47-yard line for East Central with the football. Bond back in the game. Yep. It'll be Ryan Bond, who started at quarterback for East Central, past couple possessions for EC. We've seen A.J. Messmore primarily. Are they going to run that sideline? Oops. Hand off to Cole Veal. Fullback. Touchdown. over a tackle. And then he's off to the races. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Cole Veal. EC. TD. East Central takes firm grasp of the momentum in this game. Jumping ahead 27-7 on that big 56-yard touchdown run by Colville. 3.14 to go in the third quarter. 27-7 EC. Sophie Browndike on to try and add on the extra point. Well, talked about Messmore with the explosiveness wow. capability as uh, East Central tailback, but Cole Veal, he brought the thunder and then the lightning. Yeah, I tell you what, that, that he's a big he's a big boy too when he starts rolling through there. Uh, man, oh man. He's 220 pounds and he shot out of there like a rocket. Cole Veal had one carry last year, was a fumble. This year, that one carry He's had actually had a couple others, but that's a big touchdown run right there for Cole Veal. And Sophie Browndike puts it through the uprights to make it 28 to 7 with 3.14 to go in the third quarter. Back after this, East Central right in the wave of momentum on Eagle Country 99.3 and EagleCountryOnline.com. 54-yard touchdown run by East Central's Cole Veal makes it 28 to 7. Chuck, a quick drive recap, if you would, my man. All right, they took the ball at uh, four minutes and 49 seconds. They on the 36-yard line drove five plays, 64-yard drive, ended on a 54-yard run by Kyle V. Veal. Uh, the kick was good by Sosi, and now it's 28 to 7, which was a an extremely close game. Nine minutes ago, has turned into a, a bit of a rout. Cole Veal, number 33. And call him Joker Veal. That's his nickname. I know he would run sometimes. Kickoff will roll into the end zone as it goes past Adam Bird. And it'll be a touchback. Tigers will start this drive at the 20-yard line. Cole Veal says his future plans are to play D1 football. Well, pretty impressive display right there for any scouts who may have been in attendance tonight. I, I'm telling you, he can. And uh, uh, and Griff not too far behind that either. They're really, really good. Cole probably more of a defensive prospect, despite the, yes. the offensive highlight he just provided there a moment ago. 
leading tackler for East Central. Returning this season for his senior year, all conference last year with 80 tackles, nine tackles for loss, four sacks. First and 10. Yoon will fake the handoff and then keep it and able to move it forward a yard, maybe two. Second down and eight will be the next play for Lawrenceburg with three minutes to go in the third quarter, trailing East Central 28 to seven. This game was tied at halftime, seven to seven. But Lawrenceburg had, well East Central got the ball first, got down the field quickly, scored a touchdown. Then there was a pick six thrown by Garrett Yoon, taken back by Samuel Ringer. And then Cole Veal providing that 54-yard run a moment ago. Yoon passing to Patel, intended for Patel. However, he cannot catch up with it, running toward the sideline. It falls incomplete, bringing up third down and eight for Lawrenceburg. East Central has done a really nice job uh, this second half of stopping uh, Hewn from running. They've done a really good job of Bird all night. Those are two really, really fine offensive weapons, uh, and they have not gotten track this second half. Third down and eight, critical spot here for Lawrenceburg if they want a chance of staying in this one. Yoon rolling out to his right, passing, sideline, incomplete. Probably a catchable ball there for Dakota Roth, but cannot hold on to it. And he made he a was covered. Roth made a heck of a catch when he got killed uh, earlier, uh -huh. but uh, that one probably should have been called. But it wouldn't have been a first down at any rate, and I'm sure they wouldn't try for it. I wouldn't think they would try for it down in this they deep in the not. territory. They'll have Roth go back and prepare to punt it away. Back to return for East Central is Eric Perkins, who had a punt return touchdown in the oh, first half. They had somebody back just by a penalty. On. Another penalty, and that's an organization penalty there. Yeah, the penalty came as the football was snapped. He was just coming off the, the bench. Just come wandering out there. Yeah. It'll be against Lawrenceburg, setting them back to the 17 for this fourth down play. And of course, they'll be punting again. And it'll allow Perkins to move up to about the 47 yard line for this punt return. Roth. Solid punt, bounces at midfield, takes a Lawrenceburg bounce. Pretty good nice punt. bounce, in fact. Yep. Still rolling. And all the way down to the 33-yard line. Good job by Dakota Roth there. Good kick. Trojan's offense will come back out onto the field as they lead it already, 28-7. to 7. 21 unanswered points in this third quarter. Still with 2-12 to go in the third. Looking ahead of the Central schedule, they, they ought to be hungry for a win tonight because they got a couple toughies coming up. Next week at Indianapolis, Chittard. They had to replace that game on their schedule uh, with Oak. It was Oak Hills originally. Uh, there was Harrison. It was a Harrison. Then they got Oak Hills, but with yeah. Ohio COVID yeah. restrictions for high school sports, East Central. Ended up ultimately scheduling Indy Chittard next Friday night. And then on September 4th, two weeks from the night, they get Moeller here at home. That was originally on the schedule, but was supposed to be played at Moeller. And uh, they've ultimately decided to play that game here at East Central. Here's Messmore running. And a shoestring tackle to save a touchdown by... Lawrenceburg's Luke Pierce, the safety, just did save the touchdown there by A.J. Messmore. That would have been a long one, 70-plus yards by A.J. Messmore. However, it does go down as, uh, gosh, close to 25 yards there. It'll be first and 10 for EC at the Lawrenceburg 43 with 145 to play in the third. Messmore still in there as QB. Actually, Reverse. Bond. Reverse pass. Here's Messmore passing down the field. It's caught at the 10. Shaking off the tackle and getting into the end zone is Derek Richter. Richter, the 6'5", 
senior wide out, makes that catch with the man on him, and then able to just push the tackler away from him and walk into the end zone. Nesmore connecting with Richter on the deep route. And nice job by Richter getting away from the tackle and taking it in the end zone. Ten more yards. Jeez, old feet. 44-yard touchdown pass for East Central gives them now a 34-7 lead. Extra point pending from Sophie Browndike. You know, we knew A.J. Messmore had been competing for the East Central QB job at some point and trying to come out here right now and make a statement as to why he should have that job. Here's Messmore banging it off the upright, and it does not go through. So that's her first miss on an extra point tonight. And East Central can live with that as they now lead it 34-7 to with 1.26 to go in the third quarter. Back with more on Eagle Country 99.3 and EagleCountryOnline.com. 45-yard touchdown pass from A.J. Messmore to Derek Richter. I think it was Bond, wasn't it, on a reverse? Did it was that? Messmore that ultimately passed it. Bond was out there on the field. Oh, is that right? I had Messmore it. I had was the one who actually <laughs> threw the pass. I had it opposite. <laughs> You might double check me there, but that's what I'm pretty sure I, I witnessed. I, I was kind of listening to you, and then I looked up and I saw a Bond out there. Just, they were both on the field, <laughs> which we haven't been seeing usually, but East Central's throwing, a, throwing some different looks out there tonight. But Messmore to Richter for the 45-yard strike. Has East Central up 34-7. to seven. Drive recap, Chuck. <laughs> Three plays, 67 yards. Touchdown, 45-yard uh, touchdown pass from Mesmore uh, to uh, Richter. Not much to say there. It was pretty quick, wasn't it? It was. Three plays and done. Lots been said about Lawrenceburg's big play capability yeah. coming into this game, but certainly East Central showing that they have that ability as well a few times tonight. Here's the return by Adam Bird to the 25-yard line. Jeez, oh, Pete. 118 to go, third quarter. 118 left to the third. Garrett Yoon and crew back out there. Yoon in the shotgun, hands it off to Bird. Bird up the middle, able to find a little room and then dive for another three yards up to the 33-yard line. Good carry on first down for the Tigers, and Adam Bird sets up second down in three. As we enter a minute to go in the third quarter. Second and three from the 34. Another handoff to Adam Bird. And he gains a yard up to the, about the 35. Second down, pardon me, third down and one. And we'll have to get this play in before the third quarter expires. About a two second difference between the play clock and the game clock. All started with a Garrett Yoon pick six an interception thrown earlier in this quarter, and then the floodgates had opened. Yoon under center. Trying to move forward with it. Did he get enough for the first down? They're going to eyeball it and say, yes, he did. And that'll give Lawrenceburg a fresh set of downs. Stops the clock with five seconds to go in the third quarter. And they'll have it rolling here momentarily after they get the chain set. And that'll do it for the third, 34-7. East Central leading with one quarter remaining. Aaron, a soiree of State Road 1. Back after this on Eagle Country 99.3 and EagleCountryOnline.com. Start of the fourth quarter, 12 minutes remain in this opener of the 2020 Indiana High School football season. And St. Leon, Indiana tonight, Lawrenceburg and East Central hooking up in a inter-county rivalry game, 34-7, East Central in control. Monster third quarter for the Trojans. This half started 
in a tie ball game, 7-7, but East Central just poured it on there in the third quarter. A few Lawrenceburg mistakes, a turnover, and some big plays on the offensive side by East Central. Made a big difference there in that last frame. I'll tell you that. Pass it a near side, good for two yards, or a yard for Lawrenceburg. Second down and nine coming up. I thought that uh, they would become fatigued, but they, they've they really gotten tired here. And, and <laughs> they're just trying to get out of here now. Trip wide to the right, two wide to the left. Yoon alone in the backfield. East Central blitzing. Yoon steps up and off and running. Gets to the 45, dives ahead to the 47, and that should be good for a first down for Lawrenceburg again. If you're wondering, the uh, Indiana High School football running clock rule, which changed, uh, what, two or three years ago. Yeah. They have to lead by 35, at least 35 points in the second half. And it's automatic. It's not up to a coach's vote like it was for a long time. That rule, as I just mentioned, changed a few years ago. Not a 34-7 game, still a touchdown and a two-point conversion away from that happening. Here's a strike thrown over the middle by Yoon and caught by Aiden Gilmore at the 34-yard line. Gilmore had lost his helmet and will have to go out the field and re-secure that before he can come back out and contribute. But nice job of hauling in that pass by Gilmore. Nice throw, too. Strong. Yeah, it was on a rope. Yep. You know, that last, second last play, uh, you had Kuhn running the ball. If I'm, uh, I don't think I want him running in this situation. Bird motioning out to the left side, and Yoon just off, well off target there on what should be an easy pass for him. He throws it at the feet of Adam Bird, and that will be incomplete. Second down and 10 coming up in a moment. Ten twenty nine here left in the fourth quarter. Game's really, I'm thinking, is decided, but you never know. Three wide receivers on the left and one on the right with Dakota Roth on the near side. Yoon passes over the middle. It is caught. Making that catch and then tackled shortly afterwards for Lawrenceburg was number 11, Luke Pierce. That's good for a Tigers first down inside the East Central red zone at the 18-yard line with 10-18 and counting in the fourth. Who caught that pass? I missed it. That was Luke Pierce. Pierce, junior wide out for Lawrenceburg. Yoon will keep this one and go ahead and upset with himself, slapping the ground as he dove forward as he had been tripped up by Cole Veal. If Veal doesn't get a hand on Yoon there, I'm not sure anybody does before he gets into the end zone, or at least close to it. Second down and four after that run by Garrett Yoon. Three on the left wide, one on the white right. Yoon looking to the left. Dodges a sack in the backfield. Now he runs to the near side, and Yoon oh, diving for flag. the pylon. Another flag. He will be in, but yes, there is a flag back at the line of scrimmage in the area of a hold, and Lawrenceburg certainly reacting as though that is going to be the signal with the laundry on the field, indeed. So a race, what looked like it should have been a touchdown run by Garrett Yoon due to a hold. You know, there's a lot of things that Coach Ryan Kaniga and crew are going to have to work to correct with their team and practice this coming week, but penalties are going to certainly be one of those things. Uh, only two the second half compared to eight the first half, but they've been big ones, and that one just uh, uh, erased a, a nice run for a touchdown. Yeah. Second down in 16 at the 24 for Lawrenceburg. Nine minutes, 27 seconds remaining in this game. Watch these two linebackers <laughs> and they all watch them. Look at they look like they look like college linebackers right now. Yoon in the pocket. Uh, he's Rowing open. looking for Gilmore diving for the stick and the pass out a little too far ahead of Gilmore. It falls incomplete, bringing up third down and 16. 
Pittsburgh's not beaten East Central since 1992 when Kelsey Mucker was playing at the pit for the Tigers. And it looks like that streak is going to continue to at least 2022. Or 2021, I should say. Three man rush and a blitzing linebacker. And they're showing blitz with Cole Veal. Here's Yoon passing quickly to the near side for Bird, and Bird forced out of bounds. Well shy of the first down marker. He's out at the 20. The first down marker all the way up at the eight yard line. So fourth down and about 12 to go. Lawrenceburg, of course, going to try and go for it. Trailing 34 to 7 with 9.16 remaining in this fourth quarter. This is the 11th play of the drive. Going to make it the longest drive tonight by far for Lawrenceburg, if I'm not mistaken. Three wide to the left, one wide to the right. Yoon. Dropping back further and further. Still looking downfield. Still looking on the uh -huh. run. And then Late tackled hit. out of bounds nope. at the East Central sideline. No flag for a late hit, pretty close, but not egregious enough for the officials to throw the flag. And that's a turnover on downs. Fourth down and 12, they can't convert. East Central takes over at the 25 yard line. 908 to go, fourth quarter. It's been a tale of two halves for East Central. They didn't look no. all that like they were gelling at all in the first half, but this second half, they've gotten it together in a hurry on both sides of the ball in all three phases, really. Carry up the middle for Cole Veal. He'll find his way to the 30-yard line, a pickup of about five yards. And give him four on that first down rush. Second down and six will be the next play from the 30. He was a man, I'm telling you. So Chittard, they were state champ last year in 3A, and that's East. Ranked right, number one now. Ranked number one in 3A coming into this season. That's East Central's opponent looking ahead to next Friday night. Going to catch that game. Have to make the trip on up to Indianapolis. Should be a good one. East Central ranked number Ooh. four in the state in 4A, taking on the number one 3A team. And Bishop Chittard. Here's a run by Sones, and it goes nowhere. In fact, he will lose about five yards on the run. All the way back to the 25, sending up third down in 11. There was a mix up there. Doubt that they would pass the ball in this situation, but third and eleven. Messmore, the quarterback, fakes the Ooh. handoff, then tries to one man run out of the pocket and is tackled. Aiden Gilmore makes the stop of AJ Messmore at the 28-yard line, bringing up fourth down and seven. Some history between the coaches on uh, each of these sidelines. Lawrenceburg's head coach, Ryan Kaniga, and uh, their offensive coordinator, Mike Manford, both had been on the East Central coaching staff in the past. In fact, Ryan was on the East Central coaching staff back when current East Central head coach Jake Miners was playing as quarterback for East Central back in uh, 2006, 2007 or so. I remember when Ryan was playing. I must you. be old. Very old. 6.55 to go fourth quarter. Punt rolls out of bounds by East Central. No return by Lawrenceburg. And Tigers will get it back with just inside seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Trailing East Central 34-7. to seven. Coach uh, Miners saying that regardless of the outcome or the score tonight, he knows Lawrenceburg is going to be very good this year, and he fully expects them to compete for a 3A 
state championship. And I know that's an expectation for the Tigers themselves this year as well. Here's Adam Bird running to the right side and then forced out of bounds at the 47 after picking up a first down for Lawrenceburg. Got an official's timeout here as Lawrenceburg's trying to get a first and ten play coming. There was a late East Central player getting out there. And then the umpire and the sideline official get together, have a quick conversation, and now we're ready to go. First and ten. And now Lawrenceburg's head coach, Ryan Kaniga is going to ask for a timeout from the Lawrenceburg sideline. He, he was asking for it pretty emphatically over there. Uh, very animated timeout. Uh, I don't know if the official wasn't hearing him and he was just trying to make it plain as day or if he is upset about a particular issue. And at least he's putting the mask up as he's uh, dogging the officials over there. Mask up, coach. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, uh, I, I'm not sure what the, he doesn't look particularly mad. I think he wanted an interpretation, I think, more than being angry. Yeah, I mean, Lawrenceburg is lined up ready to run that play, and then East Central sends a player on the field late, and then for some reason a whistle is blown for an official's timeout. I would be kind of wondering about that myself. It uh, kind of plays to East Central's advantage in that particular situation. But uh, there must have been a reason. It can't be just to let him come out on the field. I, I don't, I've don't. i never seen that before. Probably not going to be consequential in this game, as it no. is 34-7, to but... Uh, uh, you know, if you're if you're the losing coach in this situation, you're, not, you're just you're, looking to blow off yes, some steam with somebody. You're right? exactly right. You're not in a good mood. <laughs> First and ten for Lawrenceburg from their own 47, trailing 34 to seven. Garrett Yoon pass complete to the left sideline for Dakota Roth at midfield, and Roth eventually forced out of bounds. Coming up and making the hit for East Central is Cooper Hogue. It's a gain of about four. Second down and six will be the next play for Lawrenceburg, just across the 50 into East Central territory. Clock continues to roll as the officials rule that Hogue had stopped Ross forward momentum prior to going out of bounds. And off to Adam Bird, and he runs into a wall at the line. And they're on the stop primarily for East Central was Nathan Griffin. Also Luke Dahl in there. Nathan Griffin, another uh, big part of that linebacking duo for East Central with Cole Veal. Griffin. Says his nickname is N8. Also plays track in the springtime here at East Central. Hopes to play football in college. No, not known where just yet. Here's Adam Bird running to the right and looks as though he'll have enough yardage for a first down to keep this drive alive for Lawrenceburg. And they will move the chains. 520 and counting in the fourth quarter. Says uh, Nathan Griffin says his hobbies are hunting, video games, hanging with family and friends. Said his dad played college football. Didn't know that. And mom played tennis in college and both hold records. I'd like to know where they played. His favorite athlete, Tim Tebow. Here's Yoon Ooh. in the pocket, throwing deep downfield for Patel. He has a step on the defender in the pass, just a couple steps in front of him. He had it. He was behind the defender and uh, that's just a hair too strong yeah. for Patel to catch up with. If he did catch it, it would have been a touchdown for sure. Ball was put but it falls incomplete. Second down and 10 coming up from the 43 for Lawrenceburg in a moment. No, the ball was thrown about 50 yards and uh, the receiver was at 48. Strong arm. You can tell that uh, Garrett has strengthened that arm. Mm -hmm. Substantially, by the way. Let's see, six plays coming up. 
Hands it off to Bird. And gain, gain of one. Bring it up third down and nine from the 42 for the Lawrenceburg Tigers. Clock moving steadily. Tip of the hat to Coach Kaniga. Whoever's calling the shots over there on the Lawrenceburg sideline with the playbook. Keeping it in bounds, keeping that clock going. Yeah. At this point, you know, four and a half minutes, 34 to seven. The writing's on the wall. You're just kind of hoping at this point to get your players out of here healthy, right? Exactly. And uh, live to play another day. Next week for Lawrenceburg, they uh, and you, will be at home against Mount Healthy out of Ohio. You have two really important players out there for their offense, and uh, Hewn and uh, Bird. You don't want to see one of them get hampered in garbage time here especially here's Yoon nice pass to Roth near side Roth has to go up got a finger on it but a really hard pass to reel in it goes sailing out of bounds that'll bring up fourth down and nine for Lawrenceburg and no doubt here they're going to try and convert on fourth and long Garrett Yoon has gotten much stronger that was a I mean he threw that ball that was a rocket out there I, I like that play because it gives him an option to run. Against most teams this year, he'll, uh, he can pull that thing down and scoot. East Central's defense has gotten much, much better mm -hmm. this second half. I don't know what the adjustment was. I can't tell, but uh, I know they a couple of times they simply had a guy not rushing, just standing on the line of scrimmage waiting for uh, Garrett to make his move. Timeout called by Lawrenceburg as uh, they come up to the line. Like, timeout came from the sideline with 4.15 to go in the fourth quarter. Timeout's presented by Beacon Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Stay tuned. After the game, we have the Whitewater Motor Company and Milan postgame show coming up. We'll have your stars of the game presented by Gary Trable, your local sales expert at Hurlinger Chevrolet in West Harrison. Also, a look at your Wardway Fuels, players who fuel their team. Your Ivy Tech Community College postgame stats report with Chuck. And also, I'd like to thank another one of our sponsors, that is Dearborn County Casa. Join the voices for recovery at DearbornCountyCasa.com. Yeah, surprised at all by the result tonight, Chuck? Very much so, yeah. Yep, I am. I thought, uh, I really thought this might be the year Lawrenceburg could uh, uh, pull it off. I knew it'd be tough. And I knew, I, I thought they had to have at least one or maybe two touchdown lead at half to, uh, halftime because second half is the last three or four years that belonged to East Central. They just, uh, you know, got two platoon and all good athletes and yep. it wears you down. They do this to many Look opponents. Out. In the backfield on the fourth down and nine play out of the timeout. Coming in and popping them. And then coming up with the fumble recovery of the East Central Trojans. Jake Blake. Wow. Comes in. Hits them. And, and, uh, and uh, Garrett took a shot now. He, he did. He did not see that one. that one coming at all. He was looking downfield, and East Central was on top of him before he even knew it. Goes to what we were talking about a moment ago. Get into a situation like this where the outcome of the game is not really in doubt. Yep. Careful with leaving uh, your star guys out there. And, uh, would not be surprised at all if Yoon is out for the remainder of the game now. You, you got Bond. This is starting lineup. Uh, one wide out, and this is just going to be dive. Bond. Primarily the quarterback in the first half. In the second half, it's largely been A.J. Messmore as a signal caller for East Central. But now Ryan Bond back out there. Exclusively the starter last year for E.C. A two-yard gain on that last play for East Central. Second down and eight at the Lawrenceburg 47. A handoff up the middle for East Central's Trey Omer. 
Gains a yard, third and seven will be the next play. Homer, a 5'6", 134-pound sophomore. Getting a couple carries here in garbage time for EC. Inside three minutes to go in the fourth quarter. East Central leading Lawrenceburg 34-7. Just about padding the stats at this point. Getting a few more guys in that scorebook as well. Pitch to Messmore. Or pardon me, no, a different ball carrier out there now. 45. 45. And we'll refer to our ros trusty roster here, Adam Rosemeyer. Sophomore. Rosemeyer. Remember Rosemeyer played on the... Uh, Eric Rosemeyer, yeah. Championship ball team. carrier on the 2017 state champs. Yeah. Imagine there's a relation there. Brothers, I think. I'm not positive, though. Maxwell and him lit it up, didn't they? Back then, running the ball. Yeah, Lord, they did. It was one or the other, and yeah. they were both hard to stop. Pick your poison. Yep. And it was a fun year following the Trojans to that state title in 17. Fourth down, East Central will punt it away. Jake Fike boots it. Nice There'll be kick. no return by Lawrenceburg, and Coffin Corner as it rolls out of bounds close to the five yard line. That could be the nail in the coffin. That, coffin that, 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 that nail was stomped in there about, about <laughs> five minutes ago, maybe Just ten. Just an overkill there. 34-7 <laughs> <laughs> with the score and a uh, minute 49 remaining here in the fourth quarter. You know that that, that uh, fat fat lady and you know, that singing stuff? Yeah. Well, she's done. I think I hear her upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. Do that, do that uh, rivalry thing. Sorry, I like the that. soiree of State Road One. Yeah, there's got to be something that rolls off the tongue a little better. It'll do for now. <laughs> Usually in week two these past few years, it's been East Central Harrison, but not going to be the case this year, unfortunately. There will be no war of I-74, a casualty of the COVID crisis. These are, these the difficulty of, scheduling between Ohio and Indiana and uh, a lot of scheduling and changes and yep. everything else just did not work out as much as everybody would have liked it to. Yeah, athletic directors, hey, that's a lot of money. Uh -huh. Handoff for Lawrenceburg, taking the ball forward a lot this of time. A lot of reserve kids out there right now. Yeah, trying to get a read on that number. Find out who that one was. He was number seven for the Tigers, who would be Tegan Bennett. Tegan, a St. Lawrence middle school product in Lawrenceburg. Now it's Lawrenceburg Tigers. Another run up the middle by the Tigers. And it's Bennett again. I can tell you, because I've seen Tegan in a few St. Lawrence Panther players productions, and he is a really good leading man <laughs> on the stage. Is that right? Apparently a pretty good leading man carrying the ball, too, for uh, the Lawrenceburg Tigers. Just a freshman. Inside a minute to go. East Central 34, Lawrenceburg 7. Tigers facing third in three from the 14-yard line. Bennett running to the left side and will fall short of the first down. Fourth down and one coming up. And the Tigers will not have to run another play if they don't want to. Or maybe, I don't know, it's almost identical. Really close. We'll see what happens. Tigers probably would be happy not running a play if the officials will let them. It's like that play clock maybe about a half second ahead of the game clock. And the fans will start putting on those masks and heading for the exits. 
34-7. Going to be the final score, and no more play will be ran. East Central extends the streak another year against the Lawrenceburg Tigers in high school football.